All right, so we're seeing here that we're spending a lot of today on basically the settings, uh, this back end of the store. We've got two more things to look at. After this boring stuff is set up, like I said, then it comes the part about products, adding products and pictures and prices and all of that good stuff. Let's look at a few more things before that first. Let's look at taxes. Uh, so, this is the part where I can kind of explain what this is about, but then it's going to be up to you to decide what to do here. Um, you should check with your uh, financial professional, with your tax preparer and, and such, uh, if you have one. If you don't, I would look into someone that is knowledgeable about this stuff because I can tell you of my experiences with my clients, which might not apply to you. But the point here is that you should be charging tax, probably, for your products, especially when they're real products. The default here is that it's off. Yes? Remember to, to click the Save button at the bottom there, because uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lose it unless you click Save. So under taxes, you have to decide, um, are you going to collect taxes? The default is that no, you're not collecting tax, but you should most likely, and again, I'm not telling you you need to do this or that, especially when it comes to this sort of issue. You need to figure this out with your, uh, with your tax person. But let's assume we are going to collect taxes. So I, the way I would do it is turn on turn tax on, and then go to the bottom and click Save. Alright, so once you activate that, then you get other options. So the concept here is you're going to charge tax for your products, and we have different ways. Product prices. Product prices are tax exclusive, product prices are tax inclusive, meaning I'm selling this cupcake for $10. That includes tax, yes or no. So product prices are exclusive means no, it's $10 plus tax. It's $10 with tax already included. So whichever of these makes sense for you, but most of the time, the default here, tax exclusive. This thing costs $10 plus tax. Product specific tax. Add per product tax to the tax percentage if product has a specific tax rate, or replace tax percentage with product specific tax rate. Again, this default is just fine. Um, most of these defaults will be fine. So this one, just leave it as is. Replace tax percentage with product specific tax rate. Uh, so we can add taxes to everything in total or we can add individual tax rates to individual products. So that's what I'm saying here. Uh, if I choose to do an individual tax for this item or that item, that will supersede the original tax. The logic, how does this get applied? So you've got applied tax when billing and shipping region is the same, applied tax when billing region is the same as tax, rate and apply tax when shipping region is the same. Again, this is up for you to decide because the thing about taxing is we have 50 states and each one has their idea about how this should be done. And so some states will charge you that if there's a person in, just randomly, in Delaware buying from your item in Delaware, you're going to get charged. So they will get charged tax because they're in Delaware and you're in Delaware. Other states, Colorado, let's say, they're going to charge you Colorado tax because you're buying in Colorado even though they're in Delaware. And then California is funny because it does both. Mm -hmm. uh, it can charge you because you're outside of the state or inside of the state. So again, I'm not a pro with all of this stuff. I can just give you my own experience. But you have to decide here. Would you like to charge people tax based on... Um, based on if their billing region is the same as the tax, or their shipping region is the same as the tax, or one of these two. Apply tax to billing, apply tax to shipping, so it can be kind of messy. The default is this one. That might work just fine. Apply tax when billing region is the same as tax rate.
So we have to define a tax rate low, below here. Or whatever their tax is, their tax will be. I might be charging, you know, seven percent California rate for those in California, and I might be charging two percent those in Hawaii. So this could be kind of complicated. I'll leave the default alone for the moment. No, this is not. This is no gold cart. No. This is still just all part of the basic of it all. Does the tax table for the states is behind this? Yes, but you have to define it over here. You have to define you have to highlight all fifty states and just highlight the United States. Yes. All fifty states. Because here if I do USA, okay, all markets seven percent or main. Yeah, so this could be pretty cumbersome because yeah, let, every state. and every state is different because it's eight percent in Chula Vista where where I live and then one mile away in National City it's nine percent. Mm -hmm. So that even ranges there. So it gives you the aren't there tables like that you can buy that yes. all the details? Yes. Yeah, you just have to um, integrate it with the system, which uh, I believe that's a shortcoming of the system. Now, let's say we think about it like this. We put all markets, so every state throughout the U.S. and county or whatever, with 7%. For some, you are overcharging. For some, you are undercharging. So we have the ability to add via um, tax rates this way, or tax bans as we'll see in a moment as well, uh, and I can add multiple of them again. So yes, this could be pretty cumbersome, because then I'll say specifically that for Arizona, it's 2%. So I'm just putting some random stuff here. Um, so you have the section of tax rates and you have tax bans. Tax bans are special rules that you can create and apply on a per product basis. So in this way, I can create a tax for, let's say, um, expensive products. And that will be applied to USA, all markets, and I will say 8%. The difference here is I can, I can attach this sort of like a category. I can attach this percentage to specific products. That's what it was saying above about the uh, replace tax percentage with a product specific tax rate. So I can create different bands here, different categories, different ways to organize. And this tax rate then I can apply to different products at a time. Would that override the previous tax rate for category? Yes, that should be because of the top here. Replace tax percentage with product specific tax rate. Just like Arizona, you will all markets. Yeah. So if it's if it's anywhere else, it'll be that seven. But if it's specifically Arizona, it's Arizona. So that's what this screen is about. The big idea is what are you going to actually put here? You might then put one flat tax. Uh, you might put nothing here, but then during tax time you have to deal with it then. So it's either you deal with taxes before or after. One might be more complicated than the other, but basically it should be done. Or if this is way too complicated, just turn it all off here. But that could be problematic. Everything that we're doing here, we're trying to do it as legitimately as possible. Uh, and to have this no tax in California might not be a good idea. But if we're over on some other state that has a different kind of income tax system, then that uh, you'll have to figure it out there. Now, I believe if you go over to, what's it called again? The Board of Equalization, Board of Equalization, yeah. Franchise Tax Board. One of those two. Border Equalization, San Diego. 
I get the two mixed up. There's Board of Equalization and there's also Franchise Tax Board. And uh I don't get very good ratings from young people. <laughs> <laughs> so I would look into both of these because here is about sales and use tax. Uh and this is the California field offices for the STB. So Okay. Yeah, I always, I always get that confused. Yeah. Don't they want quarterly payments, which I guess you can generate out of the let's say you can charge for Um. Again, check. Yeah, exactly. Um, so definitely check with a financial professional about this because you can do the quarterly payments. Uh, or, or not, but I would uh, check with someone that knows much more about it. We can uh, look at this and set up and see how the tools are set up and such. But what do you what do you actually fill in depends on a variety of factors, and I would uh, look that up with a professional. I think you can get what's that? Uh, yes, caveat emptor. Uh, so I would I think there's a contact information to to get a, a hold of them too, maybe to get some info. But that's the section on, on taxes, taxing <coughs> your products. So let's say I'm going to fill something in just so that we see what it looks like, and then we'll look at shipping. Another equally fun one. So under shipping, enable it or disable it. And it says, if you're only selling digital downloads, turn that off. So you can't <coughs> ship an MP3 to someone. It's not that it's going to go through a series of tubes to them or something. Uh, they're going to get the MP3. They're going to get the sound file, video file, whatever. Let's say we're selling physical goods. So it will enable shipping. Shipping origin city. Name of the city where you fulfill and ship your orders from. Now... I'm going to sell these cupcakes, which we bake from our store on Main Street, San Diego. So that's what I'm going to fill in. But if you have some sort of distribution center, uh, and it's properly set up tax-wise and all of that, you can fill that in. So I'm going to put San Diego. Shipping zip code, uh, 91920. Nine two one two three. I think that's a San Diego zip code. Shipwire. Uh, don't worry about that. That's a paid system that you set up for people to be their fulfillment warehouses. Your merchandise is there instead of shipping it out of your own home. It's not free. You have to look into it. Question. Yeah. So um, some companies uh, have more than one shipping origin. Maybe East Coast, yeah. West Coast. So it's probably not possible with this. No, not to my knowledge. It's just one, one shipping origin, basically. Free shipping discount. Let's turn that on just to, just to see what it looks like. Sales over X will receive free shipping. So if someone's buying $50 worth of products, free shipping. Why not? I'm going to save that. Because once you save some of this info, we get more information to fill in. The shipping modules. Um, oh, turn on enable shipping. Okay, the shipping modules. Um, so do you want a flat rate, table rate, weight rate? So let's just say for the moment I'll Turn them all on, and then flat rate settings, base locale, base international, base local, base international. So this is saying, if I'm going to ship to the continental U.S., it's going to cost a flat rate of $3, let's say. 
And if I'm going to include Hawaii and Alaska and and other other areas, then it's going to be five dollars. So flat rate. That might be overpriced for some things. That might be underpriced for other things. If you're going to ship throughout North America, Canada, Mexico, Honduras, Belize, etc. Okay, then that's going to jump up to nine dollars. South America, fifteen dollars. I'm totally making all of this up. I could, I should go off to the post office or FedEx or whatever, check their <coughs> rates to make this profitable or affordable for me. If, uh, if you notice, like the post office, they have what's their phrase? If it, if it fits, it ships. They have these boxes. They have all of these shipping boxes that you can get for free from the post office. And if what you need to ship throughout the U.S. or the world, if it fits in there, it's a flat rate like three dollars. So if you're sending a product that's going to fit in a box, it's going to be three dollars. So that's what you could fill in here. You can put whatever amount you want here that makes sense. This is the flat rate. And sometimes it's over and sometimes it's under. So just putting in numbers here, that's 20, and that's 19, and that's 17, just flat rates. So it's the same $17 that's, that's going to go uh, to South Africa as it is to Lesotho or Ghana. So, um, flat rate. I'm going to update that. Table rate. Yes. Yes, that was back on general. Back on general, we had said only to the U.S. So yeah, I filled it in for no re real reason then. But if I only wanted the U.S., then I didn't have to fill in the rest. If you do not wish to ship to a particular region, leave the field blank. So in theory here, I am shipping to Africa, but if I don't want to, I can leave it blank. And if I want to offer free shipping to a region, it says I should put zero. Table rate, okay. This one is based on values. So X and above costs this. So if a person is spending, so let's say they're spending at least one dollar, it's going to be um, uh, two dollars shipping. I'm going to add another one. Let's say they're spending ten dollars worth of stuff so it's going to be seven dollars you see where that's going so between one and nine dollars it's going to be two dollars shipping ten dollars and up will be seven this is based on their price which I don't think is that useful um, the more useful one is going to be weight right here But this is a way also to set this up based on price. If we look at weight, then that's what it's going to be. It's going to be pounds. Now this is pounds because over, I believe over on the general settings, we had what units are we using. Uh, but here it's pounds. So in the real world, it costs more to ship things that weigh more. And you then have to educate yourself go to the post office, website, or in person, FedEx, whatever uh, you're using to, to ship with, and get these tables, get this information to figure this out. And so if I'm selling these cupcakes, um, you know, they're not that heavy. So if I'm saying anything more than two pounds, it's just really going to cost me five dollars to ship. But once I start to sell things that are over ten pounds, well then I need to increase this up to twelve dollars you know someone's buying more than 25 pounds of stuff I've got to pay even more for that so just to put some values here that's the idea two pounds and above up to ten pounds and then above that up to 25 pounds are these different rates So all of this, we're doing this manually, we're setting up these values, but then we also have external shipping calculators. This is let them figure it out based on distance. 
we have Australian Post, UPS, USPS. USPS, United States Postal Service. UPS, the corporation, and then Australia Post. So if you're going to use any of these, again, you turn these on. Let's say I'm going to turn on Post Office, USPS. And this is all optional here, but if I create an account at the USPS and fill this all in, what this will do is it'll integrate with your account at the post office, uh, you as the business owner. And you'll be able to, from what I understand, you'll be able to get more, you'll be able to get better prices if you keep using the system. The more you use the system, the better prices for your users. And here's where you can offer where you've seen send this via first class, send this via priority, send this via express. If I really want your product overnight, you know, it's priority express and such. And so that's that's for therefore it's gonna cost twenty dollars to ship it to you, as opposed to simply first class, which will be two dollars. Yes, uh, it's per transaction. So if someone added three items to the cart and checked out, all three of those items will be. This will use. This will be applied to all three of those items. But conceivably, if a person bought one thing and selected one item, then went back and bought another thing, they can select another. Oh, okay. This, this user customer gets selected. By me checking these, I am allowing them those options. If I don't select an option, then they can't use it. Okay. So that's some setup there, but I'll just go ahead and update that and then save at the bottom. So again, this could be complicated. And I'm not the professional to really tell you about this. Uh, one of our clients is that restaurant. They don't ship the food out. You, you order, you pick it up at the store. So we don't bother there. We have these two other clients um, that do ship throughout the U.S. And I believe for them, they avoided all of them. One of them did the flat rate, and the other one did the... The, the UPS and I wasn't in charge of USPS. I wasn't in charge of it, so I don't remember how they set it up. So uh, you need to decide what's going to be the best for you here, or simply say never mind to the whole thing and don't even turn it on and don't don't charge for that. But you could be shooting yourself in the foot because this is is going to be one of your things that's eating up your profits to send them send people these items you need to get it to them. This is what I said about Amazon. You buy the product, you get the product, but in the middle it was it was on a truck or a train or a boat or a plane and it got to you and that costs money. Uh, so this is just one of the many things you have to do now as an, as an entrepreneur. And so I would look into the actual organizations for the full help on how to set this up. This is as much as I can show you here. Any general questions on this one? Shipping. Um, so do you use, if, I'm, if this is real, how would it be checking all these flat rate tailorings and SPS? Are all those going to be checked? Uh, for, for these or the ones up no, here? The, the, the shipping modules. modules. Oh, um, well, yes, but you have to decide what you want to do. Uh, doing the flat rate avoids the rest over here. Uh, shipping, uh, selecting UPS here then could cancel these out over here because people would want the flat rate all the time even though they should choose priority mail. It's kind of either or even though it looks like it's all selectable. But it gives them the option to check wherever they want. Yes, if I've checked them on here then they can select it when they're about to um, purchase it. I think in real life you would just use US Post. Most likely. Yeah. All of these right here might be not the best solution. So I would most likely use USPS or UPS. You just have to check what the what the rates are, set it up. You know, they both have a way to set up with them with your uh, account and you know, all of this set up with them and 
There's all of this, setting up these accounts, read the documentation and all of that. And that's how then you're a legitimate business. They don't allow this particular the account doesn't allow for addition to credit. You have to go over to products and extensions. There was a module, and then it's gonna be over here. You can use FedEx. So seventy-nine dollars, but you might make it up depending on your product. And there's always yeah, and there's always uh you always have to make you have to you always have to spend a little money to make a little money. Yeah, you can add it later instead of now. You can see how it goes with this system you have here. If it's not working, maybe add it later. So these are all of the settings then under our store. We usually don't have to deal with them once they've been set up the first time, but they are editable multiple times. Any general questions on these settings that we looked at? Okay, so um, I think we're going to wrap up at this point so that we can make a backup of the site up to this point. We've done a lot of settings that I don't want to lose for next time. So we'll go through the process again about doing the backup. When we come back next time, we'll start to add products and all that good stuff. And then we'll go on. And I do want to tell you that next time when we do... Um, uh, start the day. I'm going to warn you beforehand. Next time you are going to be responsible to try to put the site back together uh, before we get started. So just to, to let you know about that. But uh, before then, let's go ahead and go over to the duplicator screen. And we're going to make a new archive of the site. Also, next week you're going to be responsible for making your, your own duplicator backup. But we'll do it together one more time. So we'll go over here to duplicator. We'll select create new. So on the right side we'll create a new package. It's got the date there and I will make a note. And I'll say added WP e-commerce to do start adding products. What's that? It doesn't recognize... Oh, yeah, I do have a double E, but it's still not going to recognize it. Mm -hmm. I guess it will. Never mind. Thank you. Question? When we're under when we're under packages and it's got a lot of backups already, they will be listed here. And I believe also in the duplicator <coughs> screen when we bring the site back to life, there's a button we can click to show it. So I'll click next. <coughs> It's going to process the site. Everything seems to be good. As we start adding products, this is the part eventually where we might start to think about getting the Duplicator Pro because as we start to add more products with pictures and prices and all of that and descriptions, that's going to start that's going to start making the site a lot larger. So I would think about getting the Duplicator Pro and there's a link to it in the handout version 2. I have used both the free one and the pro one, and the pro one does work better. It's about $40 for up to three sites. It's worth it. For the moment, we don't, we don't need it. So go ahead and build. Um, well, click on the link there and so it can tell you which the large file and then delete it. Yeah, it might be the zip file. And I'll check you guys in one moment. So I'm going to, it went through the process, it built it, and then now we've got the installer and the archive. I'll click to download them both. 
once they've downloaded, I will save them to a folder with today's date. And I'll put that into the network folder. If you'd like a copy of what I've worked with so far. And that's what we're going to use next week to resurrect the site. I didn't write any notes to uh, this day, so I, I won't add any note file, but my work for today is right there. So I'm done with the project for the moment. When we come back next time, we'll start adding products and all of that stuff. So that's it for the moment. We'll have some lab time until 4, and then we'll do it again next time.